Hello everyone and welcome to this first look. Today we are going to be taking a look at Volanta, which is Orbex's new personal flight tracker slash EFB uh, that is currently uh, in beta testing. I'm not quite sure when it will be released yet, but I was given early access to it to show you all what it's all about. So Volanta is pretty similar to Project Fly and some Toolkit Pro. The same functionalities aren't yet present because Orbex is still working on the product, but the general idea is there um, that this is an EFB and flight tracker um, that you can use. This is about the third one that will be entering uh, the market now uh, for people to choose from. So let's go ahead and open it up. When you open up Volanta for the first time, you will be prompted to connect to your flight simulator. In this case, I just have X-Plane connected. From there, you just put in all your sign-in details and then you're in. So that's the only part that you're missing from here. But when you launch into Volanta, you have the screen right here uh, where you can choose what types of um, flights you see in the air. Right now, if we go to my map settings, uh, you'll see that I have Volanta flights on here. I have VATSIM flights on here. I have IVAO. You get the picture. All of these are uh, displaying. And the Volanta flights are in blue, so you can see um, the beta testing program is rather small. Um, but you're greeted by this map, and then you have multiple options up here um, that you can choose from. So the first thing that we're going to look at is the map, and that's what we're looking at now. I've already showed you the map settings and things that you can manipulate there. Um, but you can also go to your active flight right here. So if you press down here, uh, you'll be able to put in your call sign and your flight number and your aircraft, your origin, destination, all of that information. And then from there, uh, you can begin flying. From the information that you have put in, you can then uh, export it to SimBrief and you can have um, Volanta plan all of your flights through SimBrief and it will give you all the information that you need here. Um, I found that this is a little bit tedious, especially because you need to make sure you have all of the right information here. And sometimes it's been weird when I've been trying to uh, do a flight on VATSIM because it won't put in all the correct information then I have to go in manually onto SimBrief on a browser or something uh, and edit things over there. But this is all stuff that they are working on. Again, uh, this is a beta, so everything you see here is a work in progress uh, and any bugs that we might encounter upon this experience uh, will most likely be fixed by the time that the product releases to the public. I'm going to go ahead here and I'm going to enter some more information. I'm just going to show you uh, the types of things that are available. So now I've put in all of this information right here. Um, we're going to use for the sake of example, we're JetBlue 185 and we're going from Los Angeles to San Francisco with an alternate to Oakland. So one thing right here, this is where you select your aircraft. You can't uh, use any aircraft that you don't already have inserted into the aircraft section and we'll look at that in a moment um, and this is something that is a little bit annoying uh, especially because you can't make a f an aircraft and then name it later you have to register everything um, but it's also not the end of the world and adding aircraft is really simple and I'll show you that in a minute so once you get to this point, you can either choose to not use a flight plan or add a flight plan. And then you can import something from SimBrief. So um, I have my SimBrief connected and the last flight I did was Delta 185 um, from John Wayne to San Francisco. So I can import that. And I found this to be the best method. It gets uh, all the right information in and it works really well. Or you can either import a file. So if you have the SimBrief downloader on your computer, um, then you can use that and that works really well. You can paste a route that works perfectly fine as well. Or you can go to SimBrief right here and you can have all this information inputted in for you uh, and everything should work. But as I said, in my testing of this, uh, the way that it inputs the data into SimBrief is a little bit weird and you more often than not have to go in and edit the information yourself in order to make it 100% accurate. So I just went through off camera and I changed all the information here to match up with the flight that I did last night. Uh, just for the sake of example, to show you what happens 
uh, when you import from Simbrief and you have a plan and everything all set up so that your flight can get going. So if I press import from Simbrief, it'll take a minute to load and then everything will um, be all set. And you can see on the screen right here that it has shown my flight plan uh, right here. I'm going all the way from John Wayne over to San Francisco. And I can confirm that that is exactly the route that I took. One thing I think is a little bit weird is the fact that it's so hard to see, but they've also had a lot of issues with this recently, it seems, uh, where they've been trying to make it three-dimensional so that if you moved like this, then you could see what altitude um, I was set to be at and all of that. Um, so hopefully this is something that changes. Um, the color would be a nice thing because you do have to be looking for it. And other platforms have different colors that make it a lot more easy to see. So from here, you can go to your briefing, which if you're using SimBrief, basically just pulls up your browser and shows you uh, what your briefing from SimBrief is. So if I move that onto the screen here, you can see um, this is all from SimBrief right here. Um, so that is all that that has right now, but it seems as if the developers have spoken about um, integrating this into the application, and I think that that would be fantastic. Then you can press pre-file right here, and then it gives you all these choices. And the same thing, when you click one of these choices, it will just open it up in your browser. So now that you have this all set up, let's say that you wanted to launch into your simulator and start the flight, and your active flight will stay like this um, for about 15 minutes, I believe. Um, it'll stay idle like this, and then once those 15 minutes have passed, and if you're not in your simulator, and then it will prompt you to um, delete the flight and end the flight just to make sure that you actually still want to do it and um, it's very easy to continue on with your flight if you made a mistake and it's really easy to just press no and continue on with your flight if you're just taking a longer time to be get into your simulator so i didn't actually do this flight on volanta but you can review your flight after you have completed it so once you press end flight uh, which you saw on the previous screen uh, then you have the option to review the flight and see the stats of your flight. So since I didn't actually do this flight, we're going to go back right here and we can see some of the other trips that I did. So these are all the flights that I have done. Uh, I've been doing some testing with it and I've deleted quite a few of them, but these are the ones that I've kept. Let's say that we're doing um, Las Vegas to San Francisco right here. We can select that flight and it is bringing us up to a different flight right now. It does seem like this part of the application is a little bit buggy. Um, we can try San Francisco to Anchorage right now and see if that pulls up the right one. Right, that one pulls up the right one. That's a little strange. Um, and then you can see right here, it gives you all the statistics. So you can see the ground elevation, you can see your altitude, which is fairly consistent. And then your fuel burn, passengers, all that information. And then you can also see the route that you took. So the actual route um, that you took from your starting position to your destination. Another cool thing is that this marker right here, which shows you the route that you've taken, is actually three-dimensional. So if we're able to look right here, um, right by San Francisco, sorry, I'm having a little bit of a difficult time getting there, but we got there eventually. You can see that it's moving right over there three-dimensionally. So you can see how I very slowly go up and begin that left-hand turn out of San Francisco uh, and then head on out and you can see that we're climbing right here. So that's a really cool touch. It is a little bit confusing if you are looking um, like this because you could think that it's inaccurate. For instance, if you're zoomed in at the airport right here, um, it does look a little bit weird sometimes if you're looking at it from an angle, um, but this is also something that they are working to fix. Something I really like about the Volanta map, and we're gonna go back to it, is that you can actually use it to taxi around at airports if you're having trouble. It shows you what the taxiway markers are, it shows you the runways and all that information, and it's actually really helpful. I tried doing a VATSIM flight uh, just using this, and it was updating frequently enough that I was able to really easily taxi around the airport without um, needing any charts. So if you're somebody who has trouble finding charts or anything like that, this is definitely a great application and will really help you get around airports. So we've looked at the map and we've looked at the flights. Now we're going to look at the aircraft. So for the aircraft, 
Um, it's very simple right now. It doesn't look like you can put in any images to accompany the aircraft, um, though this is something that has been requested quite a bit, so I'm assuming that you can expect it to come eventually. But this is all that the aircraft section is right now. You can see how long you have flown that aircraft on Volanta. You can see the type, and then you can see the registration right there. And then if you click on it, you can get um, a little bit more information, such as the total distance the f and uh, the total flights. So nothing too crazy, and adding an aircraft is really simple. You just press add up there enter the aircraft registration and then the ICAO code and then press create aircraft and that's all there is to it then you can just have your planes added very quickly. I have mixed feelings on this personally I like the fact that you are able to put in a lot more information with other applications and images too because I find being able to identify an aircraft based off of the picture that I have set for it is very helpful. However, I'm sure that this is something that will come and another reminder that this is beta. The last thing we're going to look at is the challenges area. And I think this is really cool. It's kind of taking inspiration from Microsoft Flight Simulator uh, in their challenge section. You can see that there are challenges right here. There's remaining and then there's completed. I haven't actually completed any, um, but um, you can click on them and it will show you exactly where the challenge is located. So right here we have Dubrovnik, the DME Arc. I'm definitely butchering that name, but fly into LDDU via the VOR Alpha Runway 29 approach. Starting with KLP NDB, you'll track outward before embarking on an 11 DME Arc before turning onto the final approach, taking the sights as you put your skills to the test. So this is really great for flight inspiration, I found. Um, I personally am not a huge fan of stuff like this, but I know a lot of people who love these little challenges here um, in order to get inspiration to do certain flights or try certain things all around the world. Here's another one. This is um, in Australia right here, Sydney to Melbourne, um, and you can do this flight and you can complete that challenge. And then there's also the country challenge right here, which is pretty much just a challenge to get to every single country that is on this list and then um, if you get to them you don't get a special prize as far I'm, as far as I'm aware but uh, you do get the satisfaction of completing the country challenge list so that's all I have for you today looking at the Volanta beta uh, it seems really promising so far and I'm really happy that I got the opportunity to try it out let me know if you guys would like to see me do another one of these videos once they have updated it more and there's more features to it. Um, if you would like to, I would absolutely be willing to um, spend some more time here uh, and show you guys some more of the ins and outs and show you a progression as the beta continues. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please do not forget to like and subscribe uh, if you enjoyed the content that we put out. Hope you guys have a great one. And I'll see you in the next video.